Hello friends and welcome to the Power Electronics course in the Electrical is Easy channel. So in the previous video, we have seen the concept of the conductivity modulation. In this video, we will look at the forward voltage current character 6 of the power diode. Okay. So before beginning that, let us see this particular graph that we have seen that is the charge distribution, charge distribution of the power diode charge distribution of the power diode. So we will see it in a little bit uh, more detail because it will help in understanding the forward voltage current characteristics of the diode. So you can see here I have already drawn two lines here. This upper line here represents the n type charge carriers in the drift region in the equilibrium condition. Okay, n type charge carriers in the drift region in the equilibrium condition. Similarly, this red line here shows the p type charge carriers in the drift region in the equilibrium condition. Naturally, because this is an n type material, the drift region is an n type material, the number of n type charge carriers will be higher than or the concentration will be higher of the n type charge carriers as compared to the p type charge carriers. Now, let us draw the n type charge carriers which is present in the p plus region or we can tell that I am going to draw the minority carrier concentration of the n type charge carriers in the p type in the p plus material in the equilibrium condition okay so let's draw that now so let me draw that here now. so this line which i am drawing represents the n type charge carriers in the p type material in the equilibrium condition okay zero represents the equilibrium condition and this is p type material and this is the n type charge carriers similarly in the n plus side we are going to have p type charge carriers as minority minority charge carriers right so we can draw that also so here also i will draw this line here like this so this line represents the p type charge carriers in the n plus side in equilibrium condition okay so these are all the minority charge carrier concentrations which i have drawn remember charge can distribution is charge per unit volume so remember that this point is also going to be a little bit important now let us draw for the majority uh, carrier concentration. So let me just draw for the P type charge carriers in this particular junction. Now I told you when we are having a forward bias, a large amount of P type charge carriers will be present in the junction. Right? A large amount of P type charge carriers will be present in the P plus and minus junction. And they are going to move through the drift region like this. They are going to move through the drift region like this. And there will be very less recombination because the drift region is very lightly low right the drift region is very lightly low and similarly you will have uh, you will have n type charge carriers here in the n side in the n plus side you will have n type charge carriers they will also enter the drift region they will also enter the drift region and i told you the recombination of this excess charge carriers happens within the drift region right and that's why i have told you there is injection of charge carriers from both sides therefore it is called double injection and because of this phenomenon, charge carrier concentration in the drift region increases and that is called conductivity modulation. Charge carrier concentration increases, conductivity increases and therefore the resistance of the drift region actually reduces. Okay, So here is where recombination happens. Now one point I want to tell here is that just because recombination has happened here, it does not become zero. All the charge carrier does not get lost. Now you remember this is charge per unit volume. This is charge distribution. So for every uh, recombination which is happening here more p plus atom more p plus charge carriers will come from the p plus side to the n minus side similarly for every electron lost more electrons will come from the n plus side into the drift region and that is how actually the charge moves and when you have charge movement you are having current or you are having conduction okay that is the basic idea now i can draw the uh, less like a normal pn junction diode this n type charge carriers will decrease like this in the p type material and similarly the p type charge carriers in this n plus region they will reduce like this this is very similar to what you have seen in the um, normal uh, diode okay so this graph will i can call it as uh, let me take another color here yeah let me call that this is n p x okay and this is p uh, let me take the red color here this is p n x okay p n x so this is remember this lines are equilibrium charge carriers in equilibrium and this is the actual uh, 
charge carrier which is moving in the forward conduction state okay so i hope this graph is clear now let us move to today's topic here now if you see that i am applying a voltage across the anode to cathode so there will be a voltage drop okay when you are connecting it in a circuit like this for example you are connecting it in a diode circuit like this okay so for example i am connecting it like this okay and i am putting a forward bias here okay i am putting a forward bias here so here you will have a voltage drop we can call it as vak okay we can call it as vak usually in diodes normal diodes this vak was the junction potential right vak was the junction potential so if you are having a pn junction like this this is pn n and VG, vj was the vak was the junction potential but here you can see you are having a junction here p plus n minus here and you are having an entire drift region here you are having an entire drift region here therefore here vak vak will be the sum of two voltages it will be vj which is the junction potential plus vrd okay it will be vj plus vrd where vj vj i can write it has the voltage drop voltage drop in the p plus n minus junction which is this region here p plus n minus junction and vrd i will call it as the voltage drop the voltage drop in the drift region the voltage drop in the drift region here okay so this is a little bit important here now this vj value this value of vj you can easily calculate from this equation which you have already seen which is if is equal to is into e power vd divided by nvt shortly diode equation you can calculate it from this particular uh, equation here and you know that this value of vt will be equal to k into t divided by q we have already seen all these concepts in the previous videos okay and this vrd so vj is over so what is this vrd this vrd i told you it is the voltage drop in the drift region okay this voltage drop is primarily resistive in nature okay this is resistive in nature okay and this value will be equal to or vrd is a function of the forward current of the diode function of the forward current of the diode or i can write vrd will be equal to if forward current into the on state resistance of the diode okay the resistance at the on state of the diode i can calculate if i know these two values i can calculate what is the value of vrd now with that over let us move into the characteristics of the diode the characteristic of the uh, power diode is similar to the signal diode but it has some major changes okay so let us start this so basically you know that as the uh, this is vak this is vak and let me call this as id okay forward current id okay this is vak voltage across the anode to cathode so as you increase the voltage initially the current will not rise but beyond a particular threshold voltage the current is going to rise okay now in a power diode the major difference here is that in a signal diode if you have seen the graph increases like this exponentially the current is going to increase exponentially but in a power diode the graph does not increase exponentially but it is more of a linear in nature okay this is more of linear in nature that is the decrease the increase of current with respect to voltage is linear in nature now this linear region the linear region here is basically due to the drift region the drift region or i can more specifically tell that it is due to the resistive nature of the drift region okay that is because of this vrd component here which is resistive in nature resistive in nature due to that this graph is mostly linear in nature here this graph is mostly linear okay now this point beyond which the voltage increases is called the cut in voltage this point beyond which the volt the current is going to increase is called the cut in voltage right so this is the cut in voltage this is the cut in voltage which is equal to vj this voltage here is the cut in voltage which is equal to vj but the total vak for a particular current value the tot for a particular current value if you select what is the vak vak is not equal to vj but is vj plus vrd 
Okay, so that value will be a little bit higher, unlike a diode case where VAK is approximately equal to VJ here. Okay, so that is the basic graph. So the major difference is that the power diodes have a linear region in its operating uh, condition. Now the next uh, important concept is that, for example, this graph is drawn at a junction temperature of TJ1. Okay, this graph is drawn at a junction temperature, say Tj1. Now, let me increase the junction temperature. I am going to increase the junction temperature to Tj2. Increase the junction temperature to Tj2. That means Tj2 is greater than Tj1. Okay, so what will be the change in graph? Okay, now as the temperature increases, the cut-in voltage would decrease and so will the Vak. Okay, so the, will the Vak. So, for a different temperature, that is Tj2, the graph would look something like this. The graph would look something like this. Okay. So the cut-in voltage has reduced. Okay. So this is the cut-in voltage and the overall VAK will also be less. Okay. So that point I will write here. So as temperature increases, as temperature increases, the VJ value decreases and the VAK value also decreases. Okay. Or we can tell that the Vj and Vak have negative temperature coefficients. They have negative temperature coefficients. Vj and Vak have negative temperature coefficients. Okay, so let me just write that down. So Tj2 is greater than Tj1. Okay, so that is okay. That means Vj2 will be less than Vj1 because of negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Similarly, VAK2 will also be less than VAK1. So, as temperature increases, VJ will decrease. Okay. So, I hope you have understood today's video. In the next video, we will start, we will go through the turn on characteristics of the diode. That is the transient condition. Okay. This is the steady state graph which we have drawn. But now we have to see what is the turn on characteristics of the power diode, just like we saw. What is the turn off characteristics of the diode?